The battery is an integral part of the system on your e-mountain bike. It stores all the electricity in it that provides the power to your motor. Now there's a lot of impressive tech that goes into one of these things. So today we're gonna to be going in depth on everything to do with your e-bike's battery. Battery life is measured by charge cycles. And if you don't know what a charge cycle is, it's the amount that you deplete a battery and the amount that it's gonna take uh, it to recharge to a full 100% be it a 50% discharge and a 50% charge, that is gonna uh, count as one cycle, as would a full depletion of your battery to a full charge of your battery. That counts as one cycle. However, this will vary from each manufacturer. For example, brands such as Bosch say, if you top the battery up only a small amount, only this is recorded and will not be counted until there are enough of these partial charges to count towards a full charge cycle. In short, if you top your battery up four times at 25%, this will only equate to a full 100% charge. As to how many cycles a battery will do, well, this will come down to how well the battery has been looked after. Things such as where it's stored, which temperature it's been exposed to, and the depth of discharge which has been subjected to over the use. Now, usually around 700 to 1,000 cycles is pretty common for your average e-bike battery. One of the most important factors in the lifetime of your e-bike's battery is your method of charging. By and large, most lithium-ion batteries last a lot longer if you charge to around 80% and not a full 100%. But this is going to vary from brand to brand and the battery management system involved. In fact, you could be looking at hundreds if not thousands more cycles if you charge that lower capacity. So researching what is the optimum charge level then is probably one of the most essential facts to find out to get the most out of the lifetime of your e-bike's battery. So what happens when you get to the end of the charge cycle period for your battery? Well, it won't simply stop working, it will still work, but it'll only be able to hold a certain amount of power for a lot less time. So for instance, if you were getting 30 miles out of that battery before, you might find yourself slowly getting 25, then 20 on a full charge. It won't stop working, it will still power, but it will not take you as far. So what's inside your e-bike battery? Well, inside this tough outer housing, you have a series of cells that are all linked together, pretty much like the standard batteries that we use for our everyday, you know, in our everyday life that is gonna power all the different things around your house. This has a battery management system in there, also known as a BMS, which is gonna control all the flow of the electric between all of those batteries in there. It's just gonna make sure they're not gonna overheat and they're all working as efficiently as possible. Now all of this is housed in a super tough plastic or aluminium housing. It's gonna protect it from all those knocks. It's also gonna have a connection port which is gonna allow it to connect to the uh, motor and power your e-bike along. So there's plenty of different options for batteries when it comes to powering your e-bike. So let's take a look at a few of them and start off with the cheapest. Now the cheapest battery that you might find on an e-bike is gonna be a lead acid battery. Now these are pretty similar to the type of batteries you find in cars and motorcycles. They're very heavy and they have very limited charge cycles. Often around 200 to 300 charge cycles is what you're gonna get out of one of those. Then there's nickel batteries. Now this is the next step up, a little bit more lightweight and that charge charge cycle it's increased more. You can get about 500 cycles out of one of those batteries up to where we are today with a lithium ion battery that you're gonna find in the modern day e-bike. These are similar to the type of battery you're gonna find in your iPhone or maybe even your laptop. There's a lot of tech going on in there and these can handle a lot of cycles. We're talking around a thousand cycles for these batteries. They're also very lightweight and very compact. They are ideal for fitting in your e-bike. Battery sizes are measured in watt hours, and these range from 300 watt hours all the way up to 900 watt hours. And you get range extenders, which are like a bolt on battery that can add, add up to around 500 watt hours to the bike also. A bigger battery will not add any more power to the bike than a smaller battery would. Instead, it increases the range of the bike, allowing the rider to cover way more miles. So how do you go about charging your e-bike battery? Well, a lot of manufacturers will have a charge port on the frame, pretty similar to like your mobile phone at home. You simply connect the charger to this and it charges the battery. Some manufacturers will allow you to remove the battery from the frame, meaning that you don't have to take the bike into the house to charge it. You only have to take the battery in alone. 
And the charging times, well, this is going to vary from brand to brand. Brands such as Bosch have a fast charger, meaning it can charge a 500 watt hour battery from flat in around three hours, and it can even charge a battery to 50% in just an hour, perfect for those mid-ride lunch breaks. For general chargers and batteries of around 500 to 700 watt hours, it will take around four to six hours for a full charge. Then there is the chargers that are gonna charge your batteries up. Your standard charger that come with a bike are great for your regular day-to-day -day chargers. They are the best of both worlds with the size and the power they can put out. One thing they differ in the charge time to is gonna be your lightweight chargers. These are a great option to stick in your ride and pack for big rides. They're considerably slower than the regular chargers, but a great option for those rides. And then there is the car charger, meaning you can charge your battery whilst on the move. You can plug it into your 12 volt cigarette lighter. It's a slow way of doing it, but a great way of topping up those batteries en route to the trails. So when it comes to storing your batteries, well, they're quite like us in what they like. They like a nice constant temperature, nothing too hot or nothing too cold. Around 20 degrees Celsius is bang on. If you go to extreme heat or extreme coldness, then the battery simply will not like it. And it is quite common for us to plug a battery in and leave it on charge up to 100%. The BMS or the battery management system should take care of this and switch the power off. But a good tip is to use an electric plug-in timer that's gonna turn off the battery, uh, turn off the power to the battery within the five or six hours that you set it to. Also, if you're gonna be storing that battery, don't store it at 100%, take it down to around 60%, that way it's gonna last way longer. You may find your battery losing some voltage even when it's not connected to your e-bike. Now this is called self-discharge. Self-discharge is a chemical reaction and the reaction is highly dependable on storage condition and temperature. So think about where you're storing your batteries. High temperatures will enlarge the self-discharge, so store your batteries in a dry, cool place. Avoid high temperatures and direct sunlight. Think about your batteries yourself. Would you like to sleep in your fridge for a week? So how about cleaning your e-bike battery? It is definitely a good idea. In fact, your e-bike battery is one of the most waterproof components on your bike. In fact, some manufacturers even give their battery an IP67 rating up to around a meter, meaning that battery can literally be submerged underwater with no apparent damage. But I wouldn't recommend going to do that. What I would do is just apply a damp cloth to the outer of the battery and give it a wipe around. Just pay attention to the contacts, spray a little bit of contact cleaner in there to make sure no moisture is sat in there. And also sometimes you can add a little bit of dielectric grease to your contact just to make sure that contact is nice and secure too. So here's my top five things that you definitely do not want to be doing to your battery. One is leaving it plugged in for long periods of time. It is a definite fire risk if you're leaving that battery on charge for a long time. Number two is storing it in extremes of temperature. Remember, 20 degrees Celsius is ideal. Number three is dropping your e-bike battery. Damage will definitely occur. Number four, is putting the battery on charge. As soon as you arrive back from a ride, you need to let those cells go from a state of discharge to a state of charge. And last on the list is gonna be deep discharges. Going from a full 100% to 0% in your battery is gonna be the way to get the least cycles out of that battery. So does a new battery have warranty? Well, yes, it definitely does. This is often limited by either a time frame or the amount of charge cycles that that battery is gonna be subjected to. Now this will vary from brand to brand, so just be sure to check that out on the website first. So how about cost? How much does it cost to replace a battery outside of your warranty period? Well, if you're looking at something like the Shimano 500 watt hour external battery, that is roughly gonna cost you about 500 pounds to replace. Now, if you're looking at a specialized Levo 700 watt hour battery, that's gonna be about 1,100 pounds to replace. So in short, the bigger the battery, the more expense. 
So how are you gonna dispose of your battery? Well, your best bet is gonna take it back to your local dealer who supplied you the e-bike. A lot of these guys are now recycling the batteries and putting them again in other e-bikes rather than incinerating them or putting them into landfill. And the same goes for a damaged battery. If you damage your battery, take it back to your dealer and they will sort it out. Just take care with that because it could potentially leak. But I hope you've enjoyed today's video on everything to do with batteries. Don't forget to get involved down in the comments box down below. If you've got any more questions about batteries give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to e to us here on EMBN and give us a like and a follow on your favorite social media too thanks for watching today guys <laughs>